Uh, tonight we're bringing a request to rezone 80 acres roughly east of Lakeview Drive from A1 Agriculture District to R1 One Family Residential District. Uh, the adjacent zoning uh, to the north and the west is unincorporated. Um, it currently has single family development. East is the TJ Rural District and south is R1 uh, One Family Residential District. Uh, this is not in any overlay. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates this um, area as single family. Uh, we looked at pro the projected traffic impact. Uh, we anticipate this site developing into a single family residential district. Um, this could yield before streets, any new streets are taken into account, 428 single family units, uh, which would increase traffic, uh, 4,036 vehicle trips per typical weekday. This number will come down some when they build streets out, um, but we have to go on the raw land at this point. Um, it is not within any special floodplains. Uh, utilities, I spoke with Conway Corporation. A pumping station will be required to provide for wastewater disposal. Um, other than that, it will be up to the applicant to extend um, utilities to the site, and that will be done. Uh, we'll look at that during the site development review process. Um, kind of in summary, again, this is a rezoning to re a request to rezone 80 acres from A1 to R1. The regulations for the A1 um, agricultural zoning district are designed to preserve and protect prime agricultural land and to protect underdeveloped areas from intent uses until a use pattern is approved. With the comprehensive plan, uh, we define this area as a single family, which establishes the use pattern, um, which is why this rezoning would be appropriate for this area. Uh, so we've also looked at this and seen that single family homes exist the north and west. Uh, the east and south at this time are largely un undeveloped. And we will require sidewalks to be constructed as a part of this development and we do not believe it will likely harm uh, adjacent property. Uh, based on this, we would recommend approval of this rezoning. Questions? Thanks, Ryan. Are there any questions for Ryan? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Yet's the key word. You got it. All right. Is the applicant here to speak in favor of this request? Yes, I'm Bobby French with Central Arkansas Professional Survey and 1021 Front Street. Uh, I represent uh, good families trying to uh, rezone this from A1 to R1. Uh, they do realize there's going to be significant infrastructure, you know, build out to get the project there, you know, water and sewer, um, you know, and I think, you know, Ryan said it good. I mean, it meets the requirement. I mean, it's master plan. I mean, I think everything is there for R1. I'm not sure why it wouldn't be. Wouldn't be. I know other people here probably feel differently. Uh, but, uh, you know, they will be required to meet all the detention requirements and everything else that uh, is required in R1, and they're willing to, to do that. Do I have questions? I think there are some questions. Yeah. I got a question. Um, so I, I don't think it's a requirement of R1 request, but do you have an idea of what the, the plan is out? You, you know, know, at this time, they don't even know what it's going to cost, really, to get the sewer and water to the property, you know, so I, you know, before they even go through the design and all that stuff, they want to be, see what, you know, that they could get that R1 zoning. Uh, so, you know, at this time, they really don't know. I mean, it, it, anything that could be allowed in R1 is possible. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. French? No. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you would not mind to state your name and your address for the minutes, please. My name is Elaine Good, and I live at One Eagle Wing Drive, and I'm the owner of the 80 acres. It's being considered at this time. Uh, I've lived there since 1977, and um, it, we have had cattle and other things there, but I'm at a place in life that I'm not able to do those things. So we decided to, to do this, to rezone it if possible, and uh, from A, A1 to R1. And, uh, Thank you for your consideration. Are there any questions for Mrs. Goode? 
Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Okay. Um, I, I will also say before we move to opposition, um, we do receive all comments that are provided um, via email. Those are forwarded on to us. And so um, we certainly acknowledge before we get into the opposition the overwhelming number of emails that we received in opposition. Um, the planning department was kind enough to print those out. And so just so you can see from the packet, we have them. So we have seen them and we have read them. And please know that your voice has been heard by the planning commission. We want to hear it tonight. Um, but I have learned in the past that if I do not acknowledge that the comments were received, that can become a question. So I just want to do that up front. So with that, we will move to opposition. So is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this request? Name and address, please. My name is Floyd Ballantyne. I live at 2920 Lakeview Road. That's on the corner of Lakeview and Catron Gap. I've lived there for 34 years. First of all, let me thank all of you for allowing us to speak in opposition of this. Uh, the changing of the A1 to R1 on Lakeview Road, property known as Eagle Wing, owned by Miss Good. I've lived four houses down from that for 34 years. It's been a pleasure to live there in this area. We have a great neighborhood where kids can ride their bikes and couples can take walks. This is possible because of the large existing lots. With the lots of trees and wildlife, we all brought, bought our homes because of the freedom of the space in that area. We built homes on lots that range from one half acre to three to five acres. It's a predominantly rural area, and that's what we wanted, and that's what we want to keep. <clears throat> At great expense to all of us, we put a lot of money into the area because that's where we wanted to stay. The attempt to rezone to R1 is in an effort to build on our understanding, and we could be wrong, but we understand 447 small homes in that area uh, on this 80 acre lot. The infrastructure in this area is not capable of handling the addition. The density and the character of such an addition would not fit the surrounding area. Let's start off with traffic. A excuse me, a subdivision of this density would bring in an additional 800 to 1,000 extra car trips a day onto that lot. The road cannot handle that. There are two roads out of the area, Lakeview Road and Cadron Gap Road. One leads to Old Highway 25 that the state just moved because of the number of vehicles coming into Conway from the Wooster area. They felt that it was unsafe on the old highway. So now we want to put this back, more cars in the same area. That's not what we want. The existing Lakeview Road in front of my house is 19 feet wide. <clears throat> if a truck and a trailer or a sanitation truck is coming at you, you hold your breath until you get around it. Otherwise, you go off the edge, and that's not, it's not a good thing. <clears throat> we have had wrecks in front of my house between cars and trailers. The trailers themselves, regular 6 by 16 work trailers, are wider than the lane and they cause problems. If you add an extra thousand cars into that, that's not a good thing. The existing water service in the area is by Beaver Fork Water. I know they mentioned Conway Corporation. Conway Corporation, I think, would have to buy the existing lines from Beaver Fork before they could replace them with their own. Beaver Fork Water is not adequate to carry 400 new homes. Not to mention city fire truck pumps that have, or we have now are too much for those lines to handle. There are six inch plastic and the city pumps would collapse them. Then you have a system drain, uh, <coughs> excuse me, have storm drainage. The property in question is the lowest point in the neighborhood. And with <coughs> extra slabs, driveways, roads, sidewalks, all that would increase the runoff to the area, causing flooding to some of the surrounding areas. That brings us to the problem of sewage. All the existing properties have septic tanks. As you know, there are no city sewer available north of Skyline. 
that's going to be an extreme expense to bring out. Large lots is what makes this work. That's what makes the septic systems perk. I've been told that they want to pump it to the city sewer in the area behind Marketplace Restaurant. It's going to be very expensive and you're going to make a lot of people mad when you try to cross their property to do so. I know that the North Hills subdivision on Highway 65 has a private treatment plant that the outflow is pumped into the Cadron Creek in the area around the county road shop. I've been told that it smells so bad in that area that you don't want to be outside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Cadron is a secondary water supply for the city of Conway. Is that really what we want to do, put stuff like that into our secondary water supply? I heard it said that the runoff could be sent to Beaver Fork, also a secondary water supply, city of Conway. We know that the geese already cause enough problems out there with E. coli that it's been closed all summer. We don't need anything else added to the Beaver Fork area. Emergency services would be stretched to the limits. The property is just outside the city limits at this time. Half of it is. Half is in the city. Half is out. That means the county sheriff would be responsible for all the crime or anything else that happens. I don't think that our great county sheriff's department, and I mean that seriously, they are great, is ready for this. I know they would do their very best, but that's a lot to ask. In case of a fire, I would put Conway's Fire Service up against anyone's fire department, anywhere. But they might not be able to hook up to Beaver Forks lines because of the extreme pumps that produce so much force. And that, like the traffic issue, is a safety hazard. As a 35-year employee of the Conway Corporation, I've witnessed a great deal of change in our community, most of it good. This building of this high-density addition is not the best use of this land. As a 10-year member of the Conway School Board, it was my pleasure to serve, however, it also gave me some insight into the school issues. 447 new homes would not only bring another 1,000 cars a day, but it would add three to 400 new children into the zone of Theodore Jones Elementary, a school that is already overtaxed and overworked. This would bring about the rezoning of the schools in the entire area for better distribution of students. Believe me. I know this to be a headache of extreme proportions because I took part in it. We don't want to have to do that. <laughs> Excuse me. The existing zoning codes, your own codes, states residential districts shall promote desirable land use and development in order to protect district character and to conserve land, and building value. The density of this development will produce an abundance of light pollution from the areas and many street lights. It'll run off the wildlife. We have deer, fox, all coyotes, everything out there, and they're going to be gone if, they, if we build this. This is not protecting the district character. That's destroying it. All of the surrounding subdivisions in the area have lots that range from one-half acre to one to three acres and even larger. We need to maintain the existing values of the district. This development would not go along with your own codes. None of us would have a problem with 60 homes on that 80 acres, one acre lots, but with 447 is not feasible on this property. The expense to the city, not the developer, but the city would be probably in the millions of dollars. The two roads would have to be rebuilt, wider, with drainage, gutters, etc. The road to the south of my house, Cadron Gap Road, is 15 feet wide. That goes out to Highway 65 North on top of Skyline Drive, where it is nearly impossible to pull out in the morning or just about any time of day. The state or the city would have to install traffic lights. Can you imagine the headache that we would have in this town when all those people coming in from Greenbrier are suddenly backed up? This area needs to stay exactly 
like it is now. Don't break your own codes by approving this rezoning. In closing, it's worth noting that the commission recently denied a rezoning in the area, I believe, of Spencer Lake. All we ask is the same consideration for our neighborhood. First, <clears throat> you know, we love that area. This is our homes. I cannot imagine what a thousand extra cars on those roads would do. These other people are going to tell you about accidents that have almost happened. All these people in the red back here are against this. We have no problem with Miss Good selling her land. It's hers. She can sell it however she wants. We would just like larger lots, smaller numbers. And uh, if you would please take this into consideration, we all ask you, keep our neighborhood like it is now. We love it. I think that uh, Brooke has some paperwork for you guys also. So at this time, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? I would like to commend you on getting it right in in your 10 minutes. And so um, we appreciate. I, I um, practiced. I, yeah, I can tell you've served on the school board and uh, that does not go unnoticed. So I will thank you for your service because I personally feel like serving on a school board is the hardest volunteer job you can do. Maybe second to the planning commission tonight. So with that, are there any questions? Oh, well, we may, we may get you to hang there for a second. Are there any questions for him this evening? Okay. All right. Thank you. We appreciate it. So is there anyone else to speak in opposition? And so just as a reminder, it'll be three minutes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, perfect. Name My name is it. Adam Barron. I live at 930 Big Sky Trail. Say, say that um, again. I'm sorry? Say one more time. Uh, Adam Barron, 930 Big Sky Trail, directly across from Eagle Wing Drive. Uh, as I said, I have lived directly across from this property for the past seven years. Um, the property being discussed tonight. I'm not an expert on the topic at hand. I know virtually nothing about zoning. My wife is the expert on all of that. But I can speak to my expertise of living in the immediate vicinity of the Eagle Wing property. I know development of an area such as ours is a matter of when, not if. My concern with development in this case has more to do with the ecology, the resident safety, and developing in a way that represents what is right for the people who love our area and call it home. And I might be way up on this mic. So the primary inroads to the area in question, Catherine Gap Road and Lakeview Acres Road, are narrow. They're roads with no sidewalks and a lot of blind curves and hills. Even with the limited amount of traffic in the area right now, any one of us could tell you a story wherein we were driving, walking, cycling, and were almost hit by a motorist in one of the numerous blind spots or curves. A dramatic increase in traffic due to the development of 400 plus houses in the area would require a significant investment in that infrastructure. Wider roads, safer footpaths on these thoroughfares to keep pedestrians safe. My 12 year old son has started riding his bike out on Lakeview Acres Road recently. We made him wait till he was 12. And I'm admittedly worried each time he goes out on the road. Throw another thousand cars into the mix and that danger increases dramatically. On a separate note, I can tell you that there's poor drainage in our little valley. Again, I live directly across from this property. I live in the same valley. When it rains, the high water table forces that rain to the surface rather quickly, which makes me wonder how a development would address drainage. Our land did not pass percolation tests when we bought it. We had to do a gray water, black water system with a septic field and had to spend a lot more money to do so. I can't see that being something a developer would want to undertake, so what would they do? How would they address that? And what would that solution do to the surrounding people, properties, and water sources? Again, I'm not an expert, um, but I've lived there for a long time, and it begs questions about how they would address these issues, along with utilities, emergency services, schools, sewage. And on behalf of the current residents, I do ask this question. Would the substitute be to our benefit as a community or to the benefit of a few? Whatever you folks decide, I would ask that you consider not only whether the land is suitable for R1 rezoning, but also whether the rezoning is in the best interest of the people already living in the area, much like you did for the population of Spencer Lake. Many of us spent our lives working to build a home on land away from high density, high traffic subdivisions where we could have privacy and peace. For the people who live in our area, it's our destination, the forever homes we've worked toward for a long time. Our area is beautiful as it is, and that natural beauty would be dramatically altered by a significant increase in 
the area constituted by a number of cookie cutter homes. Again, I wish you deliberation on your matter tonight and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Are there any questions for him this evening? No, oh, you're fine. Okay. Before we move to our next speaker, did you have something you wanted to pass out? Do you want to go ahead and pass those out? Yeah. And uh, just what, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's. Uh, I've found sometimes that's good, and more often than not, it's bad. So. Okay. Who, who, who is that? Okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna, mm -hmm. I know. Just a few pieces. No, nope, that's paper. good. That's. This is what we're here for. This is what community is supposed to be. For some, yeah. So this is good. I appreciate this. Give us just a minute to get settled here, so everybody can get a copy. And then I would say this is. You guys can pass this around, but this is another, I don't know, 20 letters in addition to Okay, and so just for those who are, you know, not with us in the room tonight, there's... Six pages here, I would say three are filled up with at least 20 signatures, so that's 60, then a, probably another 10 on the other, so another 30, so 80, 90 signatures, is that right? Somebody do my math, check that, okay, ish. So I think about 90, almost 100 signatures on these six pages. So we'll give that here, and you guys take a moment to read what she's prepared. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. We counted 51 signatures on the petition were uh, provided. So I was not even close. So there we go. <laughs> I said 100. Clarification, Chris, that's in addition to what we've already received in email. As far as we're aware, yes. Okay. Lauren, do you know how many emails? Over 100? 60 in the packet, and then so over 100. Okay. Okay. In addition to this petition? Okay, so there were 200 on the other petition, and then another 51 that you all counted. Can I correct you that there's 300 on the, position, the petitions that were emailed to you today? You okay. Guys check those. Okay, 300, 51. I feel like an auctioneer. 60. Okay, perfect. We've, we've got an idea. Okay. Just, just Yes. Just one final note, if there's any uh, additional comments that were just delivered to us, if I can collect those, please, so that way I can ensure that if this gets forwarded to the City Council that they have a copy of all public comment. With that, the, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Uh, Brooke DeSoto, 54 Bluebird Lane. I wrote out something, and I'd try to like to not use those notes and just speak with you tonight. First of all, thank you, neighbors. Woo! Good job. <laughs> and thank you guys, seriously, in front of me, like, for your time. I know that this is not an easy decision for you this evening. Um, Adam, Floyd, their points were perfect. I'm not here to dispute any of that. I can add on to that all day long. Um, I've been a resident of this area for close to 18 years. My, originally, I'm from Southern California, and I did tell Leslie Good, who's the daughter of Elaine, I'm, I am friends with Leslie, 
that it's hilarious that our friendship and her love for this crazy rural area with donkeys and chickens and roosters and all these things that we've experienced has really changed my feelings and my love for the area a lot. We're here because we love this area. There's nothing like it. It's, it's rural. It's beautiful. It's special. It's unique. And that's why we're here because we're, we're passionately opposed to this rezoning. The way that it is now is amazing. We're not disputing the, the A1 at all. You can build gorgeous houses on one acre plots. You would retain that open space that would allow the wildlife that we have. You guys, the deer that we have alone is magnificent. I don't know where they would be displaced in a sea of combs and concrete. I don't know where the, the wildlife would go, but we have raccoons and foxes, tons of squirrels, bunnies, you name it. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. So from a wildlife perspective, bringing in homes would displace a lot and it would be tragic. The other thing that a sea of homes would cause, there's no water retention. So I live on Bluebird. It's nuts, you guys, how much water we have to deal with. And the property right across from my house is something that um, Mr. Good owns, the gentleman who I gave you his letter. It's flooded all the time. So I don't know how this property, that it's going to perk or anything. But right now, we need that space to absorb the water. There's ponds there. Please come out and see. Please visit the property. I would ask you just to come and see gorgeous ponds that absorb the water, lots of open space, because otherwise, it's going to be a problematic flood. The other thing that I want to address very quickly is I'm a mother of four kids. The hardest thing I had to do and still do is let my kids ride their bikes, let my kids walk. My 15-year-old son is always arguing with me to walk those roads. You guys, it's scary. How many people here have almost wiped out a lemon? Seriously. <laughs> These people are brave. They ride their bicycles everywhere. I have almost hit their kids so many times. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Did, did, did we get your name and address? You oh, gave it, but I don't. Oh, okay. Drew got it. Good job, team. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for her this evening? Okay. All right. Um, before I bring this into commission and, and we start our, our discussion, um, I know that there are a lot of folks here. Is there anyone else that, that needs to speak in opposition to this this evening? Okay. Um, for those folks at home that are watching, I'm not sure what view, but I just want to make a note that every seat in this room is full. The walls are standing room only. You cannot even walk down the aisles. There are two rows of people in the back, and the entire lobby is full. And so I can see the hands. Um, I note that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want to make sure the folks at home know what the atmosphere is in here. And, and secondly, I'm proud to live in a city where this many people come out to have dialogue around this. And I think it's real awesome that the doors are open and we have this many people here. And so I think that that's a real, real good thing. So with that, I'm going to bring it into the commission for discussion. So commissioners, what say you? Well, uh, I'll start. Uh, well, you know, going back to the uh, first two people that spoke in opposition, uh, looks like they're hitting the roads pretty hard. And, uh, you know, out there, there are three ins and outs, and it's um, you know, Lakeview Acres, and if you keep going on Lakeview Acres, it's just a valley. I'm not sure how you could extend the road. More lanes on that, really don't know, and it comes to a stop sign down there. Uh, that just seems like backed up traffic to me, and those are blind corners and blind hills if you've driven on it. And then Cadrick Gap Road, uh, same thing as uh, blind corners. You know, there's one corner at the end and there's no street lights. This corner at the end is 90 degrees. It's all gravel. And then going the other way to Lakeview to get, probably you would go and get on the highway. There's a road called South Shore. And uh, it is paved, but there's no painted lines there. 
That's, I mean, I think there's no pain in the lines there because they'd realize that two cars really can't fit on that road. So, what I'm, so with the roads, uh, with the pushback, with not really any idea of what they're wanting, I, I, I think what they want is, you know, a lot of homes, over 100 at least, or else they would just keep it with A1 and do the one acre lots. So I think that's their goal. But I mean, not knowing what they don't have, they don't know how much it costs for the sewage and the utilities around. I mean, that would be, I think that's what you would first look at when you're starting a development and start breaking down the numbers. So just with those three points, <coughs> um, that just kind of makes it tough for me to see it. You know, if they came in with a plan and they show how they're going to subdivide it, maybe, you know, I'd have to take a look at that then. But no plan, the streets, the pushback. I mean, that's enough for me, I would say. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. I just wanted to point out, this is a rezone to an R1. R1 doesn't have a requirement to submit the preliminary plat until after the zoning. No, I understand. Uh, at this time, we don't have a preliminary plat submitted, and there's no plan of development that exists. Um, this is a an A1, existing A1 area with, uh, within that area, the uh, specific uh, call out on the comprehensive growth plan is single family. A1 is used as a placeholder zoning until a use pattern is approved. Um, single family has been approved in that area. I will point out that we do not have submission requirements and we do not have, uh, as you had stated, uh, if you had a plan, that's not a requirement for use. Mm -hmm. That would be still required after the rezoning. They would still have to go mm -hmm. through a preliminary plat process, sure. and they would still have to go through that preliminary plat approval process to sure. meet our city codes. Sure. But I, I, I know that's not a requirement. I was just saying it might help me make a decision to go forward with it, but just seeing how there's no plan yet, I just I, it just seems very unprepared. So... Thank you, Jensen, and we appreciate that, Chris. That's not, Chris, I've got a question. Uh, it's a bit of a follow-up to what you just said. So um, what was a PUD considered given the amount of concern we've heard here today? I think that would have come with some public hearing requirements, and there might have been more opportunity to hear the concerns, work with the applicant to come up with a plan that everybody agrees on. So from staff's perspective, just curious if that was considered or... Sure, I can answer that. Um, a PUD usually comes whenever there's a site-specific purpose for that PUD. For example, you may recall, uh, and I think several of the uh, uh, speakers referenced the Ivy Ridge development. It came forward with a PUD request because of the unique hardships at that location due to the terrain. Um, with this development, the comprehensive growth plan calls for single family, which the next uh, the next highest level of density from an A1 is an R1. Therefore, uh, there's no unique hardship at that location to to requ to allow or require a PUD. We can't require the PUD. What was requested by the applicant was an R1, and and it is supported by the comprehensive growth plan. So, just as a follow up, the concerns we heard tonight with infrastructure, water, sewage, roads, expense to the city, none of that, in staff's opinion, rises to the level of a hardship that would warrant a PUD. The, that's correct. Those are, those are development uh, considerations. This uh, project, if it goes forward, it would still, they would still have to submit a preliminary plat the R1 is just use. Each, uh, for example, street conditions, traffic, uh, the water service, fire department use, storm drains, sanitary sewer. Um, those are all things that are part of our development standards that have already been codified by the city council. So uh, those types of issues would go back to staff during the preliminary plat review. Those would be uh, vetted by each department. The fire marshal, for example, would see this. The city engineer would have a drainage report that would be associated with a preliminary plat. Each one of the departments within the city that would be associated with a preliminary plat review would receive a copy of that preliminary plat. Also, Conway Corp would receive a copy of that preliminary plat and any applicable utilities. Um, and then where does the preliminary plat go? The preliminary plat goes 
to uh, through the reviews through the review process with staff it's a pretty significant process and then it comes back to this commission for uh, final approval so i mean I, I appreciate that that helps me a lot um is is schools and the rezoning that is not something i had thought about the point that was made there is that something that is accounted for in the development review or would that be something to take into account now the school district is is a different elected uh, they have their own elected officials they're a different size district that's that can stream out into the county uh, those type of considerations are are not a part of our preliminary plat review process thanks i've got more questions if you oh, i can I, hold them though no i know you do okay. well maybe we'll go back and forth here um so i i I was taking notes when you were talking and you said from a1 to r1 is the next highest level of density that's a typical route um, council members have been quoted recently stating that that is the typical progression from a1 to r1 um, a1 to r1 is the general zoning especially in this area you have an established use in that area there's already an r1 just to the southwest uh, i believe to the south and the southwest, which has been established as the uh, the use within that area. So, a question maybe for for Mr. French. Um, so, sometimes we see in instances like this when there's a lot of concern from those in surrounding areas. There's some working together that happens on what the plan is, trying to address some of those. I know you still don't have a plan yet. I asked the question earlier, and I understand that. Um, but was there any level of that? Did anything like that happen? So you asked me if they're drawing something up or trying to figure out what? Well, just, just why I don't understand your question. So we've just seen in the past when a request is being met with this level of concern that there is some work that has gone on beforehand to address. With the joining owners? Yes. No. No, they have. I mean, I truthfully, honestly, Mr. Goody came to me and asked me to go from A1 to R1. I never dreamed in a million years I'd be in a room with 200 people. You know, I, I've I've done a bunch of these, and I've never had anybody <laughs> complain about R1, A1 to R1 ever. But you know, I understand. I'm not trying to say they don't have a valid point or whatever. You know, but that's you know, I never dreamed. You know, so we. We didn't go speak yeah. to the neighbors. I didn't really, truthfully, didn't think that it would be an issue. You know, I, I really didn't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I, I've, no, I've been I, doing this for 20 years. I've never had anyone complain about going from A1 to R1. Not that, the, again, I'm not trying to discount what they're talking about at, at all. Right. But that's that was really my thinking. Yep, I understand. Thank you. Can you clarify? I know somebody said part, part of it's in the city limits, part of it's out of the city limits. That's incorrect. It's all within the city it's limits. The city. You can see on page I thought that's what eight I saw, of your staff report, the city maybe. limits are labeled. The yellow box mm -hmm. indicates the area of rezone. You can see that the north, uh, the north side of this uh, proposed rezone is the city limits, as well as, I believe, the east and west side. So it kind of jogs into the county. next question is hypothetical if this if this rezoning wasn't approved tonight what is like the next course of action that's taken because i feel like in this is would keep coming back in some what are, variations are you asking possibly. what their course of action may be uh, right if this was denied tonight then it could be appealed to the city council Sir, we have brought this back into commission. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at on it, but I'm hoping that I'll kind of put out some of the things I'm thinking about here from the other commissioners and that we'll land on whatever the right decision here is. Um, so so this, this is tough. Um, I feel like we're limited in what we can do given the ask. And, and that's kind of where all of, you know, me potentially supporting this is coming from. So 
you know, on one hand, I very much value and put a lot of weight on hearing from those who are going to be most impacted, and we certainly have heard that tonight. And that's a big deal to me. But um, we're being asked, my understanding, and I would love to hear from the city, the staff, if I say anything wrong here, uh, but we're being asked to look at the land use. And a lot of those that we've A lot of the the, the uh, citizens we heard from tonight live on live in the adjacent areas, which are also R one. Um, and so the request is to move to a zoning that is concurrent with what is in the area. And my understanding is also that A one is not meant to be a temper or is not meant to be a permanent zoning. Uh, it's to be used until there is a pattern established in the area and the vast majority of the homes in that area are R1. So I would say that there has been a, um, a pattern established. How, how, how we're limited, in my opinion, is that R1 is our lowest density zone. And so if you're requesting R1, they could build houses that are exactly shape and size of the surrounding areas they could also build something that is much more dense which i totally understand the angst that comes with not knowing i would have absolutely preferred to seen a plan but we're being asked to look at our single family homes and appropriate land use for this land and i think they are I, I do not like the I, fact... I'm, I'm going to... We have kept this meeting extraordinarily respectful. My request is that we do not have any disparaging comments or sounds from the audience, please. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll try to shorten uh, my comments here, but I, I wish in an instance like this we had some sort of bifurcated or subdivided R1 requirements because this has kind of opened my eyes to the fact that there may be a need and kind of calls into the question if we as a city need to talk about is R1 going to be an appropriate lowest density zoning uh, as we move forward. I don't know. I think if we had more options here, this would be a much, much easier decision. But R1 is the least impactful, least intrusive ask that someone can have of their property that they have a right to develop. So that's what I'm struggling with. Um, and that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's a terrible situation to be in, um, but that's that's where I'm at. So I'd love to hear others or certainly staff, if I said anything wrong that would help me out to understand better, I'd love to hear it. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, yes, this is a land use issue. This The consideration is to determine if this is an appropriate, if single family residential is an appropriate use of the land. Uh, R1 is a single family residential subdivision. Uh, that we don't have any development proposal on the table at this time. Development proposals will come. Um, maybe they won't. Uh, maybe it'll sit as R1. That's up to, that's up to Ms. Good. Um, however, all that we're considering tonight and all that's on the table is that, that consideration uh, for that single family use. I think that one of the things that staff heard was the, um, the discussion about Ivy Ridge. The PUD was turned down, but the the neighborhood also requested R1 to be in place of that PUD. That was their request because that is the lowest level density. And I think that that's important to know. So with the, you know, if the rezoning were to occur and then they go through the, you know, the, the plat approval process, um, Obviously, there, there are so many people here tonight because there have not been public hearings and they have not had an opportunity to, to, to be heard. And I think it is so important. I, I put a lot of weight on, on what the neighbors in the community feel as well as the staff recommendation. And so, you know, in that situation, would there be public hearing items or public hearings to occur? If, for a PUD, this, the ordinance for a PUD requires a public information session. However, this land doesn't qualify for a PUD request. So you're talking R1 anyways, right? Yeah, I'm with, talking R1. With so. R1, there's not an ordinance requirement for a public information session. There's very limited information that we can even request because it's a straight up land use that determines compatibility. So Chris, given what you just said is, is again, the reason that I'm struggling with this. Um, 
If if this is approved tonight, it will go to the city council for their approval as well. If, if you forward to the city council, it would be if you approve tonight, it would be forwarded to the city council with a recommendation of approval from the planning commission. That's correct. So to to me, when um, we can only act within the options that we have, and uh, we, you know, you said it doesn't qualify for a PUD, which is one of the things that I came in here thinking would be a good option. Uh, because it does require the public information sessions. Um, if that is not the case, I, my opinion is that, you know, going back to, I feel somewhat limited by what is in our R1. Uh, I wish there were more options. That is the lowest density we have. Would they be able to consider if this proposal is what warrants reviewing those before action's taken? That the, feels out of out of what we can do. The proposal is already on the table, so if if it has to go forward with the conditions as codified currently. So if this goes forward to the city council and they were to change the ordinance, then that would likely uh, they would still fall under the current ordinance at the time of submittal. And uh, Beth may be able to answer some questions relative to. Uh, the, uh, relative to the requirements for a PUD submittal, if you have more for a PUD submittal process, but as far as changing a code to try to block a development or try to change a development or tr because you don't uh, don't have an option at the time of submittal, the code was written as it is. So it will follow this project until it's either approved or denied. So the option to table this and get feedback if there's any appetite to look at the requirements within R1 would not matter? That's correct, because uh, if you're making changes to change a current development on the table, then those could be considered capricious and arbitrary. If you're making a capricious and arbitrary statement or change to the code to affect a single development, then those can be overturned and would could potentially lead to a lawsuit. Okay. We're, we're further boxed in. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think the struggle I'm having is we, we are deciding land use, and oftentimes in those, like, processing that out, we're taking community into consideration of what's there, the culture that is there, and and it is a very unique area out there. It's separated by the freeway, and it's just – it's not <clears throat> technically, it's city limits, but it doesn't look like the rest of Conway, right? It is different. Um, and so that's where I'm struggling. If there, if this were in most other areas of the city, I'm like, yes, this makes sense to go there. It's growing. This is where it's growing too. But it's just, it's different. And so I'm struggling. I'm going back and forth, like, what is appropriate when you're looking at the culture in this community that's already been there for years and years and years? Because this will change the landscape of what that community looks like and what has been built there. I, I, I tend to agree and, and there is, I understand and everybody in this room I think is on the same page that we are deciding land use and there are lots of developments and neighborhoods around that are in R1. I don't, I don't think anyone really disputes that. There is obviously some conversation formal or informal about 450 houses being developed on 80 acres. I understand that is not what we are considering tonight. Let me be very clear about that. But that is what has caused the turnout that we are seeing this evening. And we even heard from our first speaker. I mean, he said, we are good with 60 homes on 80 acres. Those, those were his words. And so there, there is what I hear tonight is that there is some acceptance from the surrounding neighborhoods, um, you know, that maintains consistency with the same neighborhood situation that they all live in. And so I am in a place much like you all where I'm struggling with this because I feel real boxed in. And I feel if I, if we are to listen to the community and to the people, I, I don't know how with the options that are on the table that we give them some assurance that this can go through a process to maintain, maintain consistency with their current neighborhoods. And I'm, I'm not real happy with being boxed in. So this is where I am at with that, with it. So is there a way to not be so boxed in? So, <laughs> so um, staff advises that this be considered as a land use consideration. 
the city council has adopted code for the development portion of this of this uh, of this project. The development portion of this project is not currently on the table. Um, for example, the storm drain system will be, and I totally understand the, the, the community's response to that. However, the city council has adopted the drainage criteria manual. The drainage criteria manual will be used for any development at this location, and it, it has to go through that rigorous review process for the development portion. The land use portion of it needs to stand alone as a compatibility and make a determination in the opinion of staff based off of the uh, comprehensive growth map at this location and the adjacent uses. So I guess um, thank you for all that feedback. Very helpful. Um, the, the PUD consideration, can you talk more about why it doesn't qualify because it seems like, again, I, I'm just, I would love to encourage more time to consider all the concerns we heard tonight, and that would require that those discussions happen. Avenue to do that, I think I could be supportive of that. If it's truly the land use, is this appropriate for single family homes? My answer is yes, but is there any avenue to pursue a PUD? Can you go back over that for me? So to to have a PUD, a planned unit development, you have to have some sort of unique qualifier. For example, a terrain issue, a, a FEMA designated special flood hazard area, um, some sort of requirement that would say, hey, we cannot develop this property in the method that traditional zoning would allow us to. In this case, this land can be developed in the traditional zoning manner. So that would effectively disqualify this. Um, the applicant also has not provided us with a PUD. We are bound to the application that's on the table. The application request was from A1 to R1. You, you said it can be developed in the normal manner. How, how do you know that? Uh, there, there does not appear to be any special hardships, for example, terrain. Uh, there's not a regulatory floodway through this area. Um, there is an existing pond at the location. Ponds can be built around. The, the applicant could present a case for a planned unit development and provide that to staff to make that determination. The applicant has not provided a request for a planned unit development with a consideration, so we cannot consider something that has not been requested. I, I understand that. Yeah. That's not my question. My question is, you said that it it can be developed and so there's cl no indication. clearly clearly there's opposition to that in this room by 350 people so yeah. like I so I, I i would ask thank you for the explanation mm -hmm. I, I would maybe ask the applicant um i don't know this but i it, it sounds like we're going to have people on both sides of this vote and there is uncertainty in if we move, make a motion and take a vote. Is there any appetite from the applicant to consider a PUD, consider tabling this where we can work together more to come to a, a solution that is more mutually agreeable? You know, I, th I think, you know, I'll, I'll be, I, I think really two things, you know, I look at it as, you know, personally, I wouldn't want to set a precedent where you couldn't zone A1 to R1. I mean, y'all just had one that came in here just a few minutes before. There wasn't a single person. I mean, it was A1 to R1. There was not a single conversation. It's R, you know. But, you know, I think the they would just, you know, if y'all vote, if you fail it, we'll go to city council and see what city council says, you know, and just and go that way. And then if, if it doesn't pass, then, you know, we may have to go to, you know, page two. But I think this time they'd like to develop the property R1, which I don't think they feel like is, should be that big of an issue. I mean, personally, that's, that's where I think they're at. Yeah, so I, I, I guess, thank you, Mr. French. Um, I would agree the city council is gonna hear about this either way. I think they already have. Yeah, so um, again, 
I feel very boxed in and I hear everyone in this room. But if it's land use that's before us, single family homes is appropriate for this area and we have no ability to dictate the lot size, the number of homes. That's, that's out of our reach. So that's kind of where I'm at on it. I, I take a little piece in the fact that they're, the city council will still get to weigh in on this. I think a lot of the issues we're talking about are more appropriate for them. So I look forward to, however this goes tonight, hearing it there. And I know there's also the development review process, which will answer some of these. So. Adam, I agree with you. You know, you said it. our job here tonight is land use and land use only. If it's a land use, if land use is our job, you have to look at this piece of property and decide if it's appropriate for single family homes. And when you look at it like that, I think it's absolutely unfortunate. Appropriate for single family homes. So I mean, I struggle with it just as much as everyone else does. But when you separate it and you have to look at it as a land use question, I think it is what it is. Some, it, yes, we, we are voting on the land use. And I'm just kind of seeing what this will be. It gets approved, goes to R1, and then comes back with the preliminary plat, and there's 300 homes. And then we're right back in here. Everyone in the room's here. So it's just kind of a, we know what's coming. I mean, like, that, that, that is why the rezoning is, you know, on the discussion tonight. But, I mean, so... I know we can't just vote on something that's not here, and st but if it gets approved, we'll just be back here in a couple months with the, the plat in front of us and the same pushback. And so, I don't know. Well, I it's take just, some encouragement in, I can't believe, trust the process. So, I, I, I too do not love the situation that we have been put in. Do not, it seems like there is a better way, or there should be a better way. Letitia. So, oh. I guess the only question that I have is, oh, I'm sorry. Mr. French, has, has there been something distributed to the people in the, people in the room that make them believe that it's going to be developed into this many homes? Is there, is there just something that we're missing? Or <clears throat> I know we're not talking about the development. Uh, they're, they're here for a reason, so I'm just trying to figure out yeah, I, what I do think, they have. I think <clears throat> you know, there has been some conversation, maybe some other family members that are not you know, involved with the project that may have said that, that, that it's possible. Plus, I think the report said you know that the the R one would allow for a certain amount, but you know, I, you know the property. You know, you're gonna have a bunch of detention ponds. There's gonna be several detention ponds on the property. I, I doubt that you get 400 houses. I I don't know that for for sure, but I would doubt that between the time you put the roads and the and the detention ponds and all that stuff and sidewalk and all that stuff that you could get 400. How I, I many could you get? I don't know. I mean, you could probably get 300 houses. Could you? You know, probably yeah. I mean, is that what they're wanting to do? I don't know. I mean, we just have to see. I mean, but, you know, I think all they're wanting is the zoning R1, which is all over town. I mean, it's, but. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. I, just, I would point out, and I believe Ryan can speak to this, uh, in the staff report, what was referred to as the 428 single family units. I believe that that is derived from base density, uh, based off of the average, uh, the uh, uh, smallest square foot lot for an R1 based off of the overall acreage of the property. So um, I'm not sure if that even accounts for right-of-way dedication or any or anything that would definitely be coming out of that. But 428 is whenever we're writing these reports from a, project, a projected traffic impact, we try to give you the absolute worst case scenario as far as the number of traffic. That, that could be generated. If this was a C3 development, for example, you would hear the most intense use of that C3, and that would be where our projected traffic impact analysis would become at. 
coming from. In this case, there it says 428 single family units. That's the most intense use that we could determine based off of the data that we have. And if you have any questions, Ryan can answer those. That's correct. It's the uh, minimum lot would be a 60 by 100 foot <clears throat> lot. I would use that number. What's not taken into account are internal streets, uh, drainage, because we don't have a plan, so we wouldn't be able to, to calculate that. So this is the 428. Or that's the maximum without taking into that into account any of that. And any development will come back to this commission for approval. The preliminary plot will come back to this commission. And what all does the preliminary plot entail? It will have the layout of the subdivision with streets, drainage, very close to, it's been referenced many times tonight, the same thing that we did with Ivy Ridge. The diff Obviously not a PUD. Right. The, the main difference is whenever the preliminary plat is before this body, the determination will be, does this development meet the requirements of the city code, yes or no? Thank you for that clarification. Go so ahead. So with that clarification, if they did come back with the development that could accommodate 428 single homes, then they would be within their right to do that? If they did, uh, if they did a, find a way to get the streets and the drainage all in there, then if, if they meet the city code requirements, a preliminary plat would have to be approved. So, one, I guess one more question here, um, and would look for y'all's feedback. So I, I, I kind of see two options. One, we call it to motion, or some, you know, someone makes a motion and then we vote. Um, two, is there any, and maybe Chris, you can tell me the appropriateness of this. Is there any um, way to table this? Um, to see if we can get any more idea of what the plan is. Tabling usually comes with a purpose, so if, if you have See if a, there's more idea of what the plan the is. The applicant has already stated that they're not interested in a PUD development, so I'd, if you're tabling it just for the purpose of tabling it, then then I no. would advise against that. So it would, <laughs> it would not be for the purpose of tabling it, but again, and maybe I'm... Uh, going back to what I've already stated, I think there's some uncertainty with how this is going to go. If we had more of an idea of the plan, it could benefit the applicant um, for to maybe garner more support. So I would like to know if there's, again, any appetite to do that before we move to um, a motion. And Madam Chair, usually the applicant would be asked that question. That, that, that's, who, that's who I'm addressing it to again. So, get, and I'll just rephrase it so it make it's clear where I'm coming from. This could go either yeah, way. I, I know. It, I'm pretty sure that there's not a whole lot that we can say that's going to change 300 people's mind at this point. As far as R1, if there was a different, if there was another option than R1, I mean, we would be willing to look at it. But there. What about a PUD? You know, at this time, I think if we would just rather y'all vote and okay. then, you know if you deny it then we'll go to city council and see and then if they deny it then they would rather do r1 i mean they don't want to have to go through pud i mean i'm he's already stated it's not really even correct to do so so i mean i think we would just ask that y'all vote with your heart or whatever you feel like voting with you know i mean y'all make a decision that's what y'all make the big bucks for not i'm kidding i know i know y'all don't make the big bucks but uh uh i mean we just i mean I think that probably everybody here would like for y'all to vote on it. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank you. Chris, I'm going to ask, are there any, do we have any leeway as a commission to add any restrictions or any additions to the staff comments? Not on an, not on an R1 development, no. You said or, the box isn't me, getting R1, any bigger. I heard him. As tough as it is, I mean, I think we've all yeah. batted around for quite a while. I think it's time to mm -hmm. make a motion mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah. Well, I think we're talking about. I think we're talking about 
a bunch of people's homes here and I don't want to rush the discussion if there's anything else to be discussed. Like I agree with you that we need to vote, but we also need to hear everything that needs to be said here. I wholeheartedly agree. I'm going to ask a, we don't have a parliamentarian. I guess it's you. <laughs> what are the, there is, you can vote yes, you can vote no, you can abstain. Are those our only options? Uh, I believe you can, it's, you can vote to forward this item to the city council with a recommendation of approval. You can vote to deny this item, or you could vote to forward this item without recommendation to the city council. There we go. <laughs> the box got big. Is that? I'll ask Beth. Beth, do we allow that in our code? I mean, so it's, that's not our job here. I, my recommendation would be up down. And, and just as a point of clarification, and empathize with all of us that we are here for free and we care about our community, just as clarification, we say yes, it goes to council for, for approval. We say no, it goes to council for an appeal. If, if you if say we, no, then they have to go through the appeal process. There's an application and fee process that would be associated with that. And I'm, there may be a so, notification, a public notification for an appeal also. So, so the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. One, one more clarification asked before we vote. Um, we have to have six, six yes votes. votes of the seven here. So if we have one no or one no and one abstention or two abstentions, the vote yes. fails. So if two people abstain, the vote fails. Correct. Okay. Does that mean denied or failed? The, like how would that go to? If the vote is not approved, then it would be failed. And that's because we don't have ten here. If two abstain. Um, it still fails and it'll be appealed fails. and it'll go um, as an appeal, but it will go with obviously different comments on how it was voted on. Okay. This is going to the city. I mean, we've, right. we've heard that yeah. from the applicant. It's, yeah. it's going it's to the city council one way or the other. It's just how are we going to send so, it? So you need a motion for us to be able to, is there any other discussion among the commission before we get to that point? I assume we're going to do a voice vote here. Individual voice vote. Okay. So, I move to accept the staff recommendation to approve the rezoning request on the basis that it will allow for appropriate use of the property and will not likely negatively impact adjacent property. I have a motion. Is there a second? Seconded. The motion is on the table. I'm going to start from the bottom of how we call roll and go up, mostly because that means I get to go last. Jensen? <laughs> uh, no, I am against the staff recommendation. Ethan's not here. Lori's not here. Look. Please, Letitia. Yes. Mark. Oh, he's Adam. Yes. Alexander. Yes. Drew. No. Laura. No. Hey, you wanted to be last. Three yeses, three mm -hmm. no's. I mean, it fails no matter what, right? I know, but I still you have to vote. vote. <laughs> I'm going to vote no. Yeah.